The Cosby Show is a U.S. TV sitcom co-crafted by the lead, Bill Cosby, and broadcasted on NBC from September 1984 to April 1992. The series ran for eight seasons, comprising a total of 201 episodes, including special outtakes. The storyline revolves around an upper-middle-class African-American family residing in Brooklyn, New York. The Cosby Show achieved significant success, holding the top spot in Nielsen ratings for five consecutive years during its eight-season run. It consistently ranked in the top 20 throughout its entire duration and emerged as the quintessential show of the 80s, attracting a diverse cast. Our channel delves into the lives of some cast members from The Cosby Show who have sadly passed away. If you enjoy such content, don't forget to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Stay tuned for more engaging videos. Thank you for being a part of our community. Earl Hyman Earl Hyman, a seasoned performer celebrated as Russell Huxtable by enthusiasts of The Cosby Show, has regrettably passed away. Hyman, an actor with a background in classical training, known for his poised elegance, commanding presence, and unparalleled expertise, breathed his last on November 17, 2017, at the Lillian Booth Actors' Home in Englewood, NJ, at the age of 91. Renowned for his portrayals of characters like Othello and Henrik Ibsen's The Master Builder, as well as the dynamic James Tyrone in the all-African-American production of Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey into Night, directed by Joseph Papp, Hyman's repertoire also featured compelling performances in contemporary works. In the original 1980 Broadway rendition of Edward Albee's The Lady from Dubuque, a play that left both critics and audiences puzzled, Hyman took on the role of a soft-spoken, karate-proficient enforcer and partner to Irene Wirth's astute Angel of Death, earning him his sole Tony nomination. Hyman's cinematic and television contributions include the role of Panthro in Thundercats and appearances in television film adaptations of Julius Caesar, Coriolanus, and Macbeth. He also embraced roles in Norwegian series. In his final appearance on the New York stage in 2009, he graced the audience with his portrayal of Farapont in Anton Chekhov's Three Sisters, part of a gatehouse theater production presented by the Classical Theater of Harlem. Clarice Taylor. Clarice Taylor, yet another member of the Cosby Show's cast who has passed away, was fondly recognized as Anna Huxtable by enthusiasts of the sitcom. Clarice Taylor, a stage actress who gained belated acclaim for her portrayal of Bill Cosby's mother on The Cosby Show, breathed her last in Englewood, NJ, on May 30, 2011. She reached the age of 93. Born on September 20, 1917, in rural Virginia, Ms. Taylor grew up in Harlem, New York City. Commencing her theatrical journey with the American Negro Theater, she navigated the challenges of the industry while concurrently following her father Leon's footsteps at the post office. Ms. Taylor played a pivotal role as one of the founding members of the esteemed Negro Ensemble Company, initially based in the East Village on St. Mark's Place. The company emerged as a vital platform for African-American performers during a period when such opportunities were scarce. Her standout performance in a solo production centered on Moms Mabley, authored by Alice Childress, earned her an Obie Award. However, the partnership with Childress was marked by bitterness. Despite a four-decade acquaintance and multiple collaborations, including roles in Childress's plays like Wedding Band at the NEC, their relationship soured. On Broadway, Ms. Taylor took on the role of the Good Witch of the North in The Wiz, a musical adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. Her off-Broadway credits encompassed Charlie L. Russell's On the Black Hand Side in 1970, a role she later reprised on screen. Michelle Thomas. Michelle Thomas, another performer from The Cosby Show, has departed from life. She took on the role of Justine Phillips. Thomas passed away on December 23, 1998, in Manhattan, as reported by her spokesperson, Khadija Bell. Thomas graced the CBS soap opera The Young and the Restless as Callie, featured on The Cosby Show as Justine, 
the girlfriend of Theo, played by Malcolm Jamal Warner, and appeared on Family Matters as Myra, Steve Urkel's girlfriend, played by Jaleel White. Her diverse career also included guest appearances in various TV shows, such as Roseni. Additionally, she showcased her talent in music videos, Los Angeles theater productions, and movies like Hang In with the Homeboys. Acknowledging her excellence, Thomas recently earned an NAACP Image Award nomination for Outstanding Actress in a Daytime Drama Series. William J. Bell, co-creator and senior executive producer of The Young and the Restless, expressed profound shock and sadness over Michelle's demise, extending condolences to her family. Born in Boston and raised in New York, Thomas honed her skills at the Montclair School of Arts and the Broadway Dance Center. Her parents, Finjuar Thomas, a stage actress, and Dennis Thomas, a member of the 1970s funk band Cool and the Gang from Weehawken, New Jersey, survive her. Roscoe Lee Brown. Roscoe Lee Brown, renowned as Dr. Barnabas Foster, is another member of the Cosby Show cast who has departed from this life. Actor Roscoe Lee Brown, distinguished for his velvety voice and poised demeanor, has passed away at the age of 81. Brown succumbed to cancer on April 11, 2007, at Cedars Sinai Medical Center, as confirmed by family spokesperson Alan Nirob. Brown's extensive career spanned classic theater, television cartoons, poetry, and athleticism. His resonant voice graced the narration of the 1995 hit movie Babe. On screen, his characters exuded intelligence, cynicism, and sophistication, portraying roles such as a congressman, a judge, or a butler. In the realm of television, Brown left a lasting impact with memorable guest appearances. Notably, he portrayed a snobbish black lawyer stuck in an elevator with bigot Archie Bunker in a 1970s episode of the TV comedy All in the Family and took on the role of the butler Saunders in the comedy Soap. His excellence earned him an Emmy in 1986 for his guest role as Professor Foster on The Cosby Show. Born on May 2, 1925, to a Baptist minister in Woodbury, N.J., Brown graduated from the historically black Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Later, he returned to his alma mater to teach comparative literature and French. In 1992, Brown made a Broadway comeback in Two Trains Running, part of August Wilson's acclaimed series of plays delving into the black experience. The play secured the Tony Award for Best Play and garnered Brown a Tony nomination for Best Supporting Actor for Be Ethel Ayler. Ethel Ayler portrayed Carrie Hanks in the television series. Ethel Ayler, whose career spanned significant Broadway, film, and TV roles for five decades, passed away at the age of 88 on November 18, 2018, in Loma Linda, Calif, as confirmed by her family. The cause of her demise was not disclosed. Born on May 1, 1930 in Whistler, Alabama, Ayler pursued a major in voice at Nashville's Fisk University. However, the allure of show business prevailed over academic pursuits, leading her to move to Chicago to pursue a singing career. Her breakthrough came as part of a touring company for Porgy and Bess. Langston Hughes's musical Simply Heavenly marked Ayler's debut off-Broadway in 1957, and she soon transitioned to a role as Lena Horne's understudy in the Broadway play Jamaica. She also contributed to other Broadway productions, including The Cool World, Quamina, Black Picture Show, and The First Breeze of Summer. In film, Ayler earned a Spirit Award nomination for Best Supporting Female for her performance in the 1990 film To Sleep With Anger starring Danny Glover. She also graced the screens in 912 Weeks, 1986, and The Bodyguard, 1992, while portraying the voodoo believer Garn Mir in the critically acclaimed 1997 film Eve's Bayou. Ayler made her final Broadway appearance in the Tony-nominated production The Little Foxes in 1997. Joe Williams. Joe Williams was another cast member from the show The Cosby Show, who passed away in real life. 
Williams was a guest on the show, making appearances in several episodes, and his role in the series added an extra layer of intrigue. Fans of the show remember him as Al Hanks. Williams passed away on March 29, 1999, in Las Vegas at the age of 80. He had been admitted to the hospital the week before, seeking respiratory assistance. Born in Cordille, Georgia, to Willie Goreed and Anne Beatrice, Nee Gilbert, Williams, at around three years old, moved to Chicago with his mother and grandmother. He grew up on the South Side, attending Austin Otis Sexton Elementary School and Englewood High School. In the 1930s, during his teenage years, he was part of a gospel group, the Jubilee Boys, and performed in churches across Chicago. In 1984, Williams received the Best Jazz Vocal Performance Grammy Award for his LP, Nothing But the Blues, which also won the traditional blues album category in the Blues Music Awards of the Blues Foundation the following year. Williams earned seven other Grammy nominations for various works, showcasing his lasting impact on the jazz and blues genres, Moses Gunn. Moses Gunn played the role of Dr. Lotus in the series. Gunn passed away in Guildford, Connecticut, on December 16, 1993, due to complications related to asthma. Born on October 2, 1929, in St. Louis, Missouri, Gunn was the eldest of seven children to Mary and George Gunn, a laborer. After his mother's death, the family dispersed, and at the age of 12, Gunn left home and traveled by train. Upon his return to St. Louis, he resided in the home of Jewel Ritchie, his English and diction teacher. Gunn entered the world of acting at the age of 32. Developing his craft, he participated in several Shakespeare in the Park productions under Joseph Papp. In the play, Titus Andronicus, where he portrayed Aaron, Gunn's outstanding performance earned him an Obie Award. He also gained acclaim for his contributions to the Yale Repertory Company and the New York Shakespeare Festival. In 1962, Gunn marked his off-Broadway debut in Jean Genet's The Blacks, followed by his Broadway debut in 1966 with A Hand is on the Gate, an anthology of African-American poetry. In 1968, he co-founded the Negro Ensemble Company, a New York-based theater group, alongside playwright Douglas Turner Ward, producer-actor Robert Hooks, and theater manager Gerald S. Crone. Gunn married Gwendolyn Mama Landis in 1966 and his son Justin Moses. Gunn is a guitarist in the band Rev Shine Snake Oil Company. His stepdaughter is Kristen Sarah Landis Mudd. Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr. was fondly recognized as Ray Palomino by enthusiasts of the series. Davis passed away from complications arising from throat cancer just two months later at his residence in Beverly Hills, California, on May 16, 1990, at the age of 64. Born on December 8, 1925, in the Harlem neighborhood of Manhattan, New York City, Davis was the offspring of African-American entertainer and stage performer Sammy Davis Sr., 1900-1988, and tap dancer and stage performer Elvera Sanchez, 1905-2000. Throughout his life, Davis claimed that his mother hailed from San Juan and was Puerto Rican. In 1957, Davis was romantically involved with actress Kim Novak, who was contracted with Columbia Pictures. Due to concerns about potential repercussions for the studio, Harry Cohn, the president of Columbia, succumbed to fears related to their interracial relationship. The details vary, but it is agreed that Davis faced threats from organized crime figures associated with Cone. Davis bequeathed the majority of his estate, valued at an estimated $4,000 U.S., to his widow, Altovise Davis. However, he had an outstanding IRS debt of $5,200,000, which, with interest and penalties, escalated to over $7,000. Alto Vise became responsible for his debt as she had co-signed his tax returns. To settle the financial obligations, she was compelled to auction his personal belongings and real estate. Danny Kay Danny Kay, affectionately recognized as Dr. Burns, 
by enthusiasts of the television series The Cosby Show. In 1983, Kay underwent quadruple bypass heart surgery and contracted hepatitis C through a blood transfusion. He passed away at Cedar Sinai Medical Center in the early morning hours of March 3, 1987, at the age of 76, succumbing to complications of heart failure, internal bleeding, and hepatitis C. David Daniel Kaminsky entered the world in Brooklyn, New York on January 18, 1911, although he later claimed 1913. Born to Ukrainian Jewish immigrants Jacob and Clara, nay Nemirovsky, Kaminsky. He held the position of the youngest among three sons. Danny's parents and older brothers Larry and Mac had migrated from Yekaterinoslav, then part of Novorossiya, Russian Empire, two years before Danny's birth, making him the only son born in the United States. Both Kay and Sylvia Fine grew up in Brooklyn, residing just a few blocks away from each other. However, their paths didn't cross until they collaborated on an off-Broadway production in 1939, where Sylvia served as an audition pianist. During this time, Sylvia learned about Danny's prior employment with her father Samuel Fine, a dentist. While Danny was working in Florida, he proposed to Sylvia over the telephone, and they tied the knot in Fort Lauderdale on January 3, 1940, except for a brief separation in 1947 and 1948, during which Kay was romantically involved with Eve Arden, they remained married for the rest of their lives. Elaine Stritch Elaine Stritch portrayed Mrs. McGee in the television series. Elaine Stritch, the bold, humorous, and candid luminary of Broadway and Hollywood, passed away at her residence in Michigan on July 17, 2014. She reached the age of 89. Stritch, born in 1925, attended finishing school and later pursued drama at the New School in New York City. Her journey in the world of New York theater commenced in the 1940s, marking her debut in 1944 and earning her initial Broadway credit in 1948. She remained an integral part of the Broadway scene for decades. For contemporary comedy enthusiasts, she is likely recognized as the domineering mother of Alec Baldwin's character, Jack Donaghy, in 30 Rock, a portrayal that garnered four Emmy nominations and one victory. Despite boasting television and movie credits dating back to 1948, the stage remained her true home. On Broadway, she clinched four Tony Awards and four Drama Desk Awards. Stritch took center stage in one-woman shows and comedic roles penned by luminaries like Stephen Sondheim and Noel Coward, delivering unforgettable tunes such as The Ladies Who Lunch in Company. Last year, the longtime New Yorker bid farewell to her iconic residence, the Carlisle Hotel, and relocated to Michigan. A Detroit native, she settled just north of her hometown in Birmingham in 2013. Her most recent endeavor, a documentary film chronicling her life titled Elaine Stritch, Shoot Me, graced the New York theater scene in February. Before we part ways, let me take a moment to reflect on the incredible community we've built. Your comments, likes, and shares have turned this channel into a vibrant space for discussion, learning, and connection. Each interaction, whether through heartfelt messages or lively debates, has enriched the content and made this channel truly special. As we conclude today's video, I want to leave you with a heartfelt thank you. Your presence here is what makes this channel thrive, and I'm genuinely grateful for each and every one of you. Stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, take care. Next time.